Aunt Julia Child, welcome to my house. What fun we're going to have baking all kinds of incredible cakes, pies, and breads right here in my own kitchen. Lauren Groveman, able New York cooking teacher, demonstrates how easy it is to make ethnic specialties like rich brown pumpernickel loaves and crunchy matzahs, all in your own home. Learn how on Baking with Julia. What a wonderful big loaf of pumpernickel bread. And look at these crisp matzahs. Lauren Groveman is going to teach us how to make both of them. Hi, that's what, right. What are you going to start on? The big guy. The big one. The pumpernickel, my right. favorite. Right. Okay. We have uh, boiling water in here. I'm going to dissolve one tablespoon of instant espresso in this boiling water. Mm -hmm. Just like that. Just stir it up. And Julie, if you want to just pour it in, in that saucepan and okay. add. Unsweetened chocolate. It's two and a half ounces. Two and a half ounces. Chopped. Chopped chocolate. And okay. one stick of unsalted butter. So one I'm going to go in there stick. and okay. put it on low heat. Okay. There we go. And we're just going to melt that. And you're going to add one quarter cup of molasses. Okay. Now we're just going to get that That's so that it's melted. So that the, yeah, this is. No, I'll watch it for you. Thank you. Now I'm going to proof the yeast. So here I have one half cup of warm water, and I'm going to add two and a half packages of active dry when, yeast. When you say warm water, is that about body temperature? Yeah, comfortable. Yeah. You don't need a thermometer if, if you're a If it's too hot, you're going to kill it. Right. But you now know something? Two, and the two and a half packages, that's two about tables. two tablespoons. Two tablespoons. Right. More or less. I'm going to add a pinch of sugar to that to just yeah. make it nice and happy and wake mm -hmm. up. That's just going to sit aside to proof while we mm -hmm. assemble the rest of our ingredients. Now, I want that to just melt. I don't want it to burn because we've got chocolate in there, so it's heat well, sensitive. Watch it. I have a quarter of a cup of solid vegetable shortening in here. I'm going to add to that about two tablespoons of powdered ground caraway seeds. You use a spice grinder. They don't come ground. And one and a half tablespoons of whole caraway seeds. The reason why I use the ground is to get more intensity of flavor. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to use, I have to measure one half cup of prune lekvar, which is available in the supermarket, or you can make it at, at all home. All it is so. is just pureed cooked prunes, isn't That's it? That's all it is. For color and taste? For color, taste, and actually, it, this is a natural preservative. Oh, prunes prune. are a natural preservative. Well, that's interesting. It's as well as nice. other things, yeah. Yeah, and it's delicious. Great. It adds a nice dark color. Mm -hmm. okay, get rid of that. I have two cups of plain yogurt. That's room temperature. Or if you want, you can make it a little bit tepid. Let no, me stir this okay. up while you're doing that. And where's my tablespoon? I need a tablespoon of salt. Now, don't leave this salt out or reduce it. It's very important. Salt, what sugar makes the yeast nice and happy and tells it to wake up and smell the coffee and the... Salt tells it to slow down and smell roses because uh -huh. if you don't have the salt, your yeast will ferment too quickly and you won't develop wonderful flavor. You want it, it, That's perfect. Now I'm going to get it off and I'm going to add it. Ah! You smell that? It smells good. All yeah. Right. Okay, I'm just going to mix that all up. Now this is the body of my dough minus the yeast. Now, we don't want to I add to this to chocolate. anything very hot. It's important that we let the yeast proof. Otherwise, we'd kill the yeast, as you said. But I want you to see what's happening. It started out very granular, mm -hmm. and now it's swelling up and turning mm -hmm. nice and creamy. That means that it's in good condition, and it's going to perform for me in my, in my liquid. I want to test this. This is perfect. Put your finger in there, Julia. It's fine. Mm -hmm. It's fine. Mm, tastes good, too. OK. Add our yeast. Now, I'm going to start adding flour. This is the fun part. I get to turn this soupy stuff into a gorgeous dough. I need three and a half cups of, this is rye meal, coarse rye flour. Sometimes it's called pumpernickel flour, but it's oh. more often than that, it's called coarse rye meal. You get meal. that probably at a health food yes. store. And make sure that it has a good turnover, because there's a lot of bran in this, and it means it can go uh, get rancid quickly, uh -huh. so you have to be careful. Now, the body of this dough is this, and because all of these ingredients are very tenderizing, we've got the shortening, we've got the butter, we've got the mm -hmm. lekvar, all of these things are very 
flavorful and wonderful and tenderizing. Mm -hmm. So in order to get to beef up the texture, I really need a very strong, glutinous white flour mm. to give this bread the texture that it needs so we Would can slice it. Would it be gluten it. flour or just bread flour? Bread flour is mm -hmm. fine. Okay, now I'm just stirring this in just to get it nice and... Now I'm going to start to add my flour mm. by the cupful until it responds the way I want it to, mm -hmm. and I turn it out. You don't use a machine for this. Nope. You like the feel. I like the feel. It makes me happy. It makes me feel connected. It makes me feel... Wait, you, you'll see. You're yeah. going to help me knead the stone. Oh, you'll see. Yes, this is like going to the gym in the morning. So the more I do it, the more I can eat. Mm-hmm. Because you're getting real exercise. Yeah. Okay, now what I'm doing now is I'm creating texture. I love the smell of it. Isn't I can it sense. delicious? The molasses and the prunes mm -hmm. and everything else. The prunes and the chocolate and the coffee that give that dark yeah. color. And dimension of flavor. Mm -hmm. Now, if you see that, I'm not dumping in a whole lot of flour at once. No. Because I feel you develop much better texture, actually earlier, by doing it this way. Mm -hmm. I do it by the handful, and when the dough leaves the sides of the bowl and becomes hard to stir, mm -hmm. but it's not dry, no. then I turn it out onto a nice floured surface, mm -hmm. and then I go to work which I'm just about ready to do. Okay, I'm gonna get all this good stuff out with a rubber spatula. I don't throw anything away. It's all a mouthful, mm -hmm. right? Okay, now that goes away. I'm gonna scrape off my spoon and I'm gonna go to work now, okay. I don't put my, my hand into my flour bin. I always work with a full cup mm -hmm. next to me. That's so that you don't want to mess up your right. flour bin. Right. Right. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, this is my best friend. Remember that. This, yeah. this acts as my right hand if you're righty and left hand if you're lefty during the beginning of the kneading process. Now this is, a, this is a tacky, sticky dough in the beginning, but it actually, you'll watch it respond to me in a very short time. This is going to be beautiful and, and silky and resilient, but it won't be finished until this dough talks to me. And we're not close. Well, it's going to say something. You know, it's going to talk to me. It's going to talk to you. But it's not, we're not close. So we have to let me go to work here just for a couple minutes. Now, what I'm looking for is I want to get real resilience in the center. When I feel tacky spots, that means I'm not ready. Mm, that's still soft and it's sticky. It's really isn't it? soft, yeah. We yeah. Have, that means I have to keep going. Mm -hmm. Well, you're really better than the machine, I think. This is how my kids see me first thing in the morning. Making bread and yeah. bagels and things. Yeah. Let me try a little sure. kneading and see Go if for I it. can. Let me give you. You're really, you're really going right into it, aren't mm -hmm. you? That's right. If at any point it's sticky, you can use that. Yeah, you know, that gives really gives you a good mm -hmm. workout. It is still sticky. Yeah. It's still sticky. It's going to talk to us soon. It's going to talk. Mm. Has a good taste right now. Now. When, I, when it, I tell you that it starts to talk, that means that I'm almost there. And when I mean talk, it sounds light when I need it. Listen. Sort of a soft push. Like, yeah. yeah. It's starting. Mm -hmm. It goes, shh, shh. Yes, it does. That means I'm doing a good job. Yes, I can hear that. I think we're done. And I'll show you how we tell. Push it and let it go. Now, uh -huh. that's not easy to do with a dough that has such tenderizing ingredients. There we go. And it's not nearly so sticky. Yeah. Beautiful feel. My big hound. Let's yeah. put it in the bowl. We have a big eight-quart buttered bowl here. It's important that you butter Butters. that bowl. And we're going to butter the top of that dough. I'm always in favor of butter. And we're going to butter some plastic wrap. I think we got it all. You got it. Perfect. And I'm going to just cover the dough. I'm going to put a towel over it. I'll use one of my towels. And put it in a warm, draft-free spot. So now the, the dough has to rise two times. First time for two and a half hours or until it's doubled in bulk and very billowy and soft. That's at room temperature? At room temperature, nice, comfortable. No. And then we punch it down and we let it rise again for an hour and 15 minutes. Again, it will double 
quicker mm. the second time around. Still at room temperature. At room temperature. Yeah. Now, let's punch down this dough. Let's. Oh, right, so you punch uh, it down. Isn't that okay. beautiful? Isn't that sweet? Yeah. Okay. Punching down is a way of deflating it totally. Mm-hmm. Like then that. You, you really do it the way the French do it, completely. Completely. Completely and deflating. Yes. Well, that redistributes the yeast, too, doesn't it? Right, absolutely. Okay, now I'm going to get it out on a lightly floured surface. At this point, the dough doesn't need any more flour. It's just we need flour to work it. I'm going to divide this dough in half, and I'm going to shape one. Uh, I'm going to put, I'll put my other towel on that one. I can lend you mine if you need one. Okay, there we go. There you are. Thank you very much. I'm going to get my rolling pin. And I'm going to flour under this. This is my favorite type of rolling pin here, by the way. Has no ball bearings. It's tapered. It's very smooth. Mm -hmm. Easy to work. Very easy to work. You just have to remember that your power is right here in the center. So you have to give equal time to your dough. What's that dough? It certainly has changed, hasn't it? All that kneading and uh -huh. resting. So I'm just going to shape a loaf here. I need Ooh. another towel. Because I rise this loaf like a baby in a sling. Oh. You know, like the stork carries a baby? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, this is what helps retain a beautiful plump shape. Okay. So now I'm just going to roll down. Oh, well, that's interesting that you're pressing that all in. Mm-hmm. That prevents tunnels uh -huh. in your baked bread. You ever slice a, a loaf of bread and you have a yes. big hole running down mm -hmm. the center? Actually, I want to brush this off a little bit. I don't need this flour in my dough. It's just mm -hmm. helping it not to yeah. stick, so we want to get rid of it. I'm calling on the glutinous structure that I mm -hmm. created when I was kneading it. All of these lines here have, are, are bands of elasticity that I'm mm -hmm. asking to perform for me, rather than just taking it, shaping it into like a, like a cigar shape and throwing yeah. it. This is, I'm more deliberate with my shape, so I'm much more like likely. a French baguette. You have mm -hmm. the, the forming mm -hmm. is so important, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. I mean, you do all of this work to make the dough. You at least spend a little time to shape it correctly, right? You're pinching right? it nicely. Now I'm pinching to create yeah. a nice, neat seam. Mm -hmm. And I take this. I'm taking... It, it looks somehow alive. <laughs> like an it is. <laughs> it's alive until it hits the oven. Then it has about... A Five minutes to live. Pushing that way down in. Way down in, and I'm elongating the sides here, just mm -hmm. like that. And I'm going to pull it down mm. and attach I'm it like to the seam. Like making a hospital bed. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> That's okay. fascinating. Okay. This is a nice plump loaf. Very deliberate. Pulling that all together. Again. Yes. And don't be afraid to really pull and pinch this loaf because you're the boss. You know, this this dough just needs to be told what to do and it will mm -hmm. respond. So if you don't like the way it's shaped, change it. That's mm -hmm. all. Okay. So I've placed it diagonally on my towel. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to lift my ends of my towel here like this mm -hmm. and just hold it like in a sling. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to take the scissors and I'm going to cut so here's my hole, mm -hmm. right like that. I just, sure. I'm going to insert a, just a little simple S hook. It's very inexpensive. You go to mm -hmm. the hardware store, and this is what I use. And I've been looking around your kitchen, and I've noticed that you have a knob right on your cupboard. Mm -hmm. If you could just hang that up. And I'll bring the other one. Great, for 30 minutes. Do you have holes in all your towels? Every single one of them. Now I'm going to prepare the paddle for our shaped loaf. Now we have, you know, you have a choice here. You can put either sesame seeds on your loaf or caraway mm -hmm. seeds. I think I'm going to just put caraway seeds. I love caraway seeds. Yeah. So I also flavor the bottom of my mm -hmm. peel. Okay. I think that's very sensible. Okie doke. So now you just And that's take just been about, uh, how just long about was that 30 about? minutes. 30 minutes. Right. You put it seam side down. Seam side down, and you use your hands to correct the shape. And I'm going to take a serrated knife and slash the loaf to create vents so that mm -hmm. steam can escape as no. the dough rises. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it'll seal. It, it bakes at a very high temperature, and the outside will seal too quickly. Mm -hmm. 
and it'll burst. The loaf will burst if you don't cut decorative. And you do it slightly yeah, slanted. Yeah, slightly slanted, about a third of an inch in. And now I'm going to brush this with a little egg white glaze, which gives it a nice shiny finish and also will encourage my seeds to stick on the top. Well, those egg whites that were strained, as yes. you usually do. Mm -hmm. you know. And it makes them much easier to apply with a pastry brush. Then you, get little, you don't get little lumpies in them. Right. But you have two egg whites and about a tablespoon of water. An egg white water. with a little bit of like a teaspoon and a half Te of water. You know, mm -hmm. And I'll put some, I'm just going to put some caraway seeds in there. Well, that's going to be delicious. Okay, now, so it's going to go into the oven. And I'm going to inject steam with ice water. So these, my tiles are in tiles, here. Yes. Yeah. They're preheated to 450 degrees. My ice water goes underneath the tiles and the door closes. And it bakes now for 10 minutes at 450, and then 30 minutes at 350. Now the second one is even bigger than the first of the Big bread. and fat, right. And you put, they put sesame mm -hmm. seeds yes, on Yes, you have it. choice. So we have one of each. Right. Do you think it's done by now? I think so. I think we should check. All right. Okay. Sure smells good. Oh, it's gorgeous. Looks done to me. What do you think? Ah. Oh, that's gorgeous. Lovely. Okay, we're going to just put this on a wire rack to cool. This needs at least three hours of cooling before you cut it or oh, store it. I was ready to eat it right now. No, no, no we have well, to be Well, now we can make our nuts. But our matzah, yes. Our matzahs. Okay, I always keep good. calling them left. Oh, well, that's okay. They're delicious. It doesn't matter what you call them. Okay. Really simple stuff. Yeah. No. So, in this bowl, I have four cups of all-purpose flour, just simple all-purpose flour, and I'm going to add an optional ingredient, which is one quarter cup of sesame seeds. You don't mm. have to add them, but I love them. I, think and I love them, too. They not only make the dough taste better, but they also help when you roll out the dough because the oh. seeds, you'll mm -hmm. see when I, when I roll out the dough. That's pepper. I this is pepper. You, know. you can add this and you can leave it out. Oh. Now, I have to say that this is not Passover matzah, which is normally just flour and water. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is just strictly is delicious matzo. This fancy. is not religious matzo. Oh, okay. yeah. I have two teaspoons of coarse salt that I'm dissolving in one and a half cups of warm water. I'm going to stir that up here. Mm -hmm. And I'm just just make a well. Mm -hmm. This would be part of multi-religion. Right. This is just delicious stuff that you, may, you mm -hmm. eat to make you happy, having nothing to do with anything else. It's no. kind of a big cracker. Right, yeah. a delicious cracker. Now I'm just going to, I'm just mixing this up. I'm making a dough with my hand. As always. As always, <laughs> right. <laughs> That's right. It's awfully nice to know this because they're never as fresh when you buy them, are they? They're also Oh my goodness, I think they've been gummy. in there for four years. So now I'm going to just flour some, you know, my surface here and, and pull it out, just dump it. Use my scraper to scrape off my hands. Uh, okay. Really simple. Really. Unleavened, Unleavened bread. bread. It has no leavening, no nothing. Well, that's the ancient type of bread, yes. isn't it? Yes, it is. And Have actually, they made this in prehistoric times. Yes, and this was actually the Passover matzah is about commemorating when the uh, ancient Egyptian Jews fled that's right, yes. to, to get away from slavery. And that's mm -hmm. why it only has flour and water in it. They were not in, interested in delicious things. They were just wanted to mm -hmm. save their lives and eat to mm -hmm. stay safe. That's but this is delicious matzo. So. Mm -hmm. OK, now I'm done kneading. That's it. Perfectly kneaded. It's supple. Mm -hmm. I'm going to divide this into 12 pieces. The best way to do that is in half, each half in half and then each quarter into thirds. Oh, that one. Okay. That's pretty accurate, isn't it? I'm just going to shove all these guys over there. And I'm going to work with one at a time. I flour my surface. I'm going to flour this pin. Now, I'm going to roll this out. Now, it's very glutinous because I just kneaded it. Mm -hmm. But the whole spirit of making matzah is to be done quickly. So that's where the seeds help me, because actually when I roll in one direction, the seeds help to cut those glutinous uh -huh. strands well, develop that, during, that makes, that during makes needing. Sense. So you get two benefits. And use your flour as your friend, because if you don't do it, it'll stick. Just keep picking it up, flour it. Watch. Okay. 
this is not a perfectly shaped round or a, or a so rectangular. Rough. This is just the whole beauty of matzah is to look earthy and free form. The most important thing that you need to do is roll evenly, which means every spot on this sheet needs to have equal time from the center of my pen. Every once in a while you'll have a little tear, so what? Doesn't matter. This is a docker that's used for making puff pastry. Now, if you don't have a docker, use a fork. Docker's docker is very efficient. Yeah. So take a and that's the huh? so that it won't rise. So that it won't bubble in the oven. Oh, right. I see. Yeah. Same concept with pie dough. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm going to put a little bit of coarse salt on this. And then I'm just going to run my hand over the sheet very gently. And I'm not going to worry that some of it's going to fall off because I don't want all of it. It'll be too salty. Mm -hmm. Now we go to the oven, just like this. The oven is preheated as high as it can go. The rack is in the lowest position, and I've placed a baking sheet upside down on the rack, and it's been preheating. Red hot. Red hot, there ready we go. to go. Right, and you let it cook for one minute and check it. Mm -hmm. And don't leave the kitchen once, not even once. Now, how can you tell when okay, it's done? Teeny weeny little blisters, and it starts to turn golden. So I'm going to open it up. Well, there it just is. Lift it right off and turn mm -hmm. it. Practically and done then, as it is. Now we're going to leave it in there for another minute, check it, and then it might need one more time. Mm -hmm. Okay, beautiful. Now look. It's done. Isn't that beautiful? Now the Isn't center of this is darker. Mm -hmm. It's the best part. The darker parts are the best part. Mm -hmm. So keep rolling and baking and cooling. So here's a gorgeous stack of fresh matzah. Mm. And I'd like to fix you one. Would okay. that be all right? I love it. Okay. So uh, how long can you keep them, the matzah? Well, you know, I have to tell you something, Julie. It doesn't hang around my house too long. So I really can't tell you the actual but lifespan. Say a week or so anyway in a plastic I think, bag? I think more than that. Mm -hmm. I really do. And I think that the sesame seeds help to give it that, that savory quality. Mm -hmm. Smoked salmon. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to put one more piece on it. I'm going to make one for myself, Not too. Delicious. Well, I'm going to cut you some of this okay. pumpernickel. Mm, look at that. I've always wanted to make pumpernickel. And here we are. The important thing is that heavy kneading. That's yummy. Lauren, this is delicious. I've always wanted to make my own pumpernickel. That's so good. I'm glad you Thank like you it. Thank you again, too. dear. Thank you so much. Come again. Bon appétit